Hey everybody, welcome into the Generation Xbox Podcast. This is episode number 274. I'm your host, Tyler. Joined as, as always, well, it hasn't been as always lately, but we have the band back together today. Hayden, welcome back. Yeah, um, it's exciting. It's like, yeah. it's, I think it's the first time in almost a month that we're all yeah. on here together. That's crazy. That's that we're all here together. Yeah, and Steven, welcome. Um, hello, hello, hello. Yeah. So, uh, a lot to talk to, or a lot to talk about all of a sudden. Um, a lot to talk to you guys about what I was trying to get out there. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, we've played some games. There's uh, news about more games to talk about and on the way. So that's pretty cool. Let's, let's, yeah, next... gaming's actually come back around. Like, the yeah. the drought might be over. <laughs> Fingers crossed, right, that it's, <laughs> that it's over. So there's quite a bit to get into this week, and uh, we'll be talking Gamescom. We'll be making some predictions there. We'll be uh, talking about some Halo Infinite news Call of Duty and more. One thing we're going to want to listen to next week is all the announcements at Gamescom. That is for sure. Mm, I'm excited. So, it feels like I I trust Keedy with stuff now. Um, like after his E3 show, I think like he did a really good job. Mm-hmm. Um, well, at least like you know he he obviously like he can draw the big names, um, which, which is like what matters really for me. Like I I want to see big stuff going into. Um, the the release season, so I'm like really excited for Gamescom this year. Like mm-hmm. really excited. Yeah. So there's a lot of stuff that we're gonna see there. You know what we're not gonna see there, Hayden? Um, I mean, d- all I care you want, about you want me to, is you want me to tell you what we're not gonna see? What are we not gonna see? We're not gonna see a Halo Infinite co-op mode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're not gonna see Forge either. Oof. Because. <laughs> Because those modes are, I shouldn't laugh, because it's um, it's not the best news in the world for Halo fans, including me. Halo Infinite will be launching without co-op and Forge modes. Um, they are delayed. Uh, the co-op is going to come, Steven, in Season 2, which is about three months or so post-launch, which we don't know when that is yet. And the Forge will come apparently in Season 3, which will be about six months post-launch. Your thoughts on a mode that, when I hear co-op campaign, I always think Halo. Your thoughts on that not being in this game? It's ridiculous. It's what it is. I mean, this game was supposed to come out last year. Last year, it was supposed to come out. And it got delayed a year. And I think most people were okay with it. Um, You know, because we wanted a good game, right? And now... We're looking at, you know, a year released from the Series X launching, or a year removed from the Series X launching, and your flagship franchise is launching incomplete. I I see some people say on Twitter that, like, it's it's a half release. It's I don't think it's that far. I mean, obviously, the campaign will be there, and multiplayer, those are, like, 80% of the game. But... uh, I like playing the campaign in co-op. I just, I've done it for a long, long time. I mean, I did beat Halo 3 by myself um, when that came out. But Halo 2, I remember vividly playing with people in Halo 1. Same thing. So, you know, we're in um, Halo Infinite and no co-op. Like, what are you doing? What's going on there? Who's... I'm really curious what the dev... What happened here? I hope Jason Schreier uh, gets to the bottom of this at some point in his next mm-hmm. book, or you know, just for Bloomberg, because um, he he's like really the like the best journalist left for for stuff like this. Like I'm I'm really curious what what happened here. Was this a too many like bosses, not enough like and not. So it wasn't focused, like, or did was there just a lot of bugs? Like, I don't know, but it this is not a good look from Microsoft's flagship franchise. Yeah, and Hayden, real quick before you go here, let me just throw this part in, and then you can kind of give your thoughts on it. But I, I know normally right now, um, whenever there's a delay, we're like, okay, cool, take your time, get it right. You know, we support whatever, blah blah blah, all that, and it's all true. Except in this case, for me. Because, well, first of all, they're not delaying. They're just not including things. But this game was 
presented on July 23rd of 2020 as if it was releasing in four months or three months. Three, well, three or four, one or the other. And, like, the, the fact that they delayed it, what, weeks later? They knew the state that game was in when they showed it off. They knew it was probably going to get delayed. And they marketed the idea of Halo around the hype about their new console until they just absolutely couldn't anymore and had to announce a delay. Mm -hmm. So you don't get a pass from me here. Like you, you, there was enough goodwill in the community to say, you know what? Yes. We'd much rather you take the time and get it right than release a game that looks like that. So do that. And now we're getting a mode that has been connected, two modes actually, that have been connected with this franchise for a long time. And Forge for not as long, but still, it's it's something that Halo is known for. I I just don't give them as much of a pass here. How about you? What do you what do you think about this? Um Yeah, I agree. I I think it's a little ridiculous, really, to be honest. I, I don't... I'm, I'm fine with the idea that these aren't included because they need to polish up the rest of the game. If they had said that this time last year, I would have been like, okay, fair. That's cool. Um, but, like, they've had an entire year extra working on this game. Like, they, they had... That's, like... That's a huge delay, and you know what I mean. Like people have still kind of kept the buzz going the entire time, um, anticipating this to be like the Halo, right? Like this is the, this is like the the comeback, um, and now it's like to me, co-op is like synonymous with Halo. That's, that's what it is. Like I don't, I can't comprehend Halo campaign without co-op. At all, it, it doesn't. It just doesn't. Make well, sense. Halo, or Hayden, to to back that up, what you're saying, like Steven and I, we started playing through the Halo games again because we were already making plans to play Halo Infinite together. Yeah, exactly. That yeah, and that makes sense. Like, because that's what you'd expect. I mean, I, I I obviously I I didn't play like Halo when it first came out, but I assume Combat Evolved had co-op campaign yes. or did it not yep, like it did. We, yeah it's all so it's always been a thing because like, in my mind like halo and like sitting with your friend or like going online with your friend and playing co-op it's like that's the experience it's one of the only like non or it's the only pve um games i i like really play with with someone else anymore uh mm -hmm. most games i i play pvp if i'm playing with people or you know they might be on my team, but, you know, like like Call of Duty, right, or Battlefield. Um, but it's very rare that I'm playing against the computer with a friend. Um, I guess we did in Back for Blood Tile when we played the beta last week. But yeah. it's, you know, Halo is... I feel like co-op campaign is pretty much a, a staple of the franchise. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. And, Tyler, I'm sure you're going to ask this question... But I'll I'll do it I'll do it now. Like, should they have delayed this game to make sure it it, it released complete? Like, you couldn't, right? That was. I don't think. I, you yeah, can. I don't I, think, I think they that, can. Yeah. But like in the ideal world, yeah, because like the campaign for me, it's almost like off limits now because I know I'll just wait to play it, um, in co-op. Like I don't see a reason for me yeah. to play it before the co-op comes, whether that's like a month or whether it's like. Six months. I agree. After. I don't know how long it'll be, but I, I'm not going to play it because I'll, I I only want to play it because it's something to do with like my brother or like I'll I'll hop yep. in and play with you guys. And you know what I mean? And it's like mm -hmm. I don't want to sit there and I don't know. Oh, I don't think it appeals to me without co -op. I'm a hundred percent playing this by myself. I, I've so far avoided the spoilers that were released in the tech test. This has just yeah. been like the most questionable, like problematic. That's the wrong word there. Um. But just problem, <laughs> there just seems to be a ton of issues with this game and releasing. Like it, this game is haunted. I, I, do you, and do you think like Phil's like? Do you think Phil was pissed when when he was told this? 
Oh, I imagine that was not a positive meeting. Well, but did you see the interview with Phil? It might have been IGN Unlocked, like, um, like into and recent. I can't remember, but, like, it was around that time. Um, and I think it might have been that. They asked him, like, is Infinite, like, ride or die? Like, is this kind of, like... Oh, yeah, yeah. Your he, big he was shot to get, it, right? to get yeah. it good. And he was like, no, the franchise will be fine no matter what. Like, I, it, Halo Infinite doesn't... Do I it. agree I like, well, with him. But what answer is he, what answer is he gonna give out of Yeah, and I would... I, in the sense of, like, you know, the games are gonna keep coming, I agree. But I think, like, you lose a lot of goodwill with your fan base if... Your... I don't think that's They're... true at all. I, I don't think that's even close to the truth, to be honest with you. Where, what? What Hayden's what? saying on losing goodwill with the fan base. Like, I, I think Halo is just one of those that it's just so iconic, or uh, that's not even the right word. It's just so attached, like stapled together with the Microsoft or the Xbox brand. Like, those two things go hand in hand. Like, you think it's so... Nintendo, you think Mario, and then probably Pokemon in that order. Um, and then you think Xbox, and you probably think Halo. Uh, and I just... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's going to make people unhappy. This is... Already, I mean, I see it online. They're... You know, it's still going to release with the campaign and multiplayer, so I guess there's that. Mm -hmm. um, and Forge is not, like, a huge deal. Like, if it was just Forge that was being delayed until, like, Season 2 or 3, I don't think it would have a problem. I think it's just co-op campaign not being ready. I Did Forge launch... Day and date with Halo Five. I don't remember there I being a Forge. Mode don't at all. I have a feeling it didn't. And I remember co local split screen co op was not in Halo Five, at least not at launch. So, to that, like when you think about that, like that would say no, the series will be just fine. But I do think they're testing the patience of some of their fan base. Like, yeah, and I the, think like this is maybe where like a generational difference comes into it as well. Like, I didn't grow up with Halo. I have no attachment to the Halo franchise. Yeah. In my mm. eyes, it's tired, and it should have. It, like, it, Infinite is a push. Like, and I would say the same with Gears. I like those are franchises that I, if they said were done, I would be like, cool. It wouldn't phase me. And I, I, in my eyes, Xbox. It. I, I, I don't think I can quite word it. Um, in a fair I think I know way. what you're getting at. But I, 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 you know, I didn't grow up with Halo. I have no ties to the franchise. Um, I didn't grow up, like, you know, wasn't a part of my early gaming experience. And it certainly wasn't part of my early Xbox experiences at all. Um, so, like, Steven saying that it's kind of like, you know, Nintendo have Mario and. and Xbox have Halo, like, I can kind of see it, but at the same time, I, I think... It, I don't want to say it drags it, it me down, but it, it, in my eyes, it kind of does. So, Gears and Halo are tired franchises. Yeah. That, no, I, I don't know. think... I mean, I could see where you're coming from being just younger, that you would attach yeah. Gears more readily, but, I mean, Halo has been there since the beginning whereas gears one didn't come till 360 yeah. so but i think they're both ready to be gone uh, i don't think either need to to be here i to, to have the xbox brand succeed i don't i didn't say yeah but i don't think they need to be yeah gone. but why yeah is, you don't need halo to maybe succeed as the brand but why why get rid of it like i don't think nintendo well, well, yeah, Nintendo might true. need mario still but i mean i i i feel like i'd be remiss Hayden, if i didn't call out here that you are the biggest fan among us of, by your criteria here, the most tired franchise in gaming today, which is Call of Duty. Yes. Yeah, yeah Call but of Duty I doesn't openly need to be say here. that Call of Duty needs and to be gone. Like, it, <laughs> I like Warzone, but the franchise itself, mm -hmm. it's 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 suffering I think from the I, release model I, they, they they they've chosen. It's. I think the only time it's time to go away is if you don't adapt and find ways to stay relevant yeah. as the times change. Now, I feel like Infinite is a definite attempt to do that. But what I was going to say before is I feel like I don't think it's like game breaking in terms of like Halo's done because of this. It's not. But even for me, like... It's affecting the level of trust that I have in 343 so to deliver. So that was going to be my... I was going to bring that up. Um, 
Because none of this shit happened. Yeah. When it was um. Bungie. So Bungie. okay. So Bungie obviously made a phenomenal five games, right? Of Halo, um, the th- the three main Halo games, the prequel in Reach, and then ODST. Like mm-hmm. people yep. loved all five of those. Um, f- Mm-hmm. And some people have their favorites, but you still see people argue over Halo 2 versus Halo 3. Halo 4, first game by 343, three, not good for a lot of reasons, campaign-wise. Like, s- bullet spongy mm-hmm. enemies, weapons it that was, were boring, was. levels that were kind of boring and long. All of a sudden, you went from, like, you know, 20 to 30-minute levels. Like, a 30-minute was, like, your longest level in Halo Oh, yeah. Two, to each level in Halo 4 took, like, a freaking hour. Um, especially on Legendary. That was the worst. And then Halo 5 kind of like... They kind of removed the levels in a way. Like, I didn't even realize how many levels I got through the first time I played it. Because it just... It, it was kind of more seamless. And that's cool. But it, Halo 5 was definitely a step up for 3. Four, three. Um, though I know a lot of people hate, like, Locke. Um, because... Well, yeah. But I didn't actually mind the story of Halo 5. But, all right, so now we're getting Halo Infinite, which has already just had a slew of problems, uh, including a whole year delay, a year after the console was released, and now it's not launching with co-op. And I'm just going to focus on that, because I don't think Forge is all that big of a deal. Um, yeah. To, to the people who care about it, though, it's like a major thing. But, yeah, I mean, I would, so, I would I'd say, um, tend to, to agree. like the younger audience, I, Forge is, that's like... Yeah, we had already talked, quite Tyler, about is this 343's, like, last chance? And, I mean, Halo Infinite might be phenomenal. It might be a masterpiece, without like, even without co-op. Mm-hmm. It might just be an amazing, perfect campaign with really fun multiplayer. And we'll forget about this. And, you know, 343 now has the range of Halo and, and will feel, feel good. But if, if Halo Infinite launches and it's, like, middling, um, you know, sevens and eights... And I think an eight is a failure for this by this point in time, to be honest with you. Um, okay. Should Microsoft pull the Halo franchise from three four three and and give it to someone else? I, I think they need to ground up it if that's the case. What, what do you um, mean? By that? I don't know. Because like like completely start over in terms right. of how how the next game is going to be built and released. But who's going to be um, doing the and that? And that but that, but that's what I mean. Like the the entire team needs to be reevaluated. Mm. Like, and I'm never an advocate for, you know, like saying this. You know, I didn't like something. That person should be fired. I I'm not an advocate of that, um, because not everything needs to be just for me. But if the general consensus is that you know this is not great, then I think they need to look at it because in like. Yeah, some people might think Hayden or Halo's tired. Maybe they think Hayden's tired too. I don't know. But uh, ultimately, the Xbox brand is gonna live or die or succeed or fail with this this franchise. They don't have anything else yet that can carry them. Yeah. Because as good as Forza Horizon is, it ain't the console oh, seller. It's a niche. Yeah. It's it, like a niche game. Like it's racing. You know, and they're, yeah, they are not going to have, yeah, they are not going to have that legit console seller until they, until maybe Starfield delivers or Avowed um, down the road. But those games are a ways well, away. But you know the like, thing, though? Uh, so, I don't even like, know if that's but, true. Because look at, look at the, 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 like franchise defining games for PlayStation and Nintendo. What do they all have in common? Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm kind of including Pokemon in this. The, the, are you saying like the single no, player no, no, experience? No, 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 no. They all have like one character that is associated with it. So Uncharted has Nathan Drake. The Last of Us has Ellie and um, oh my gosh, what's his name? I'm Joel. Yeah, Joel. And and then you know P- uh, Mario in the Nintendo franchises and Pikachu because of like being able to. He was the first one that was like out of yeah. the Pokeball, and he's and, like, been yeah. yeah. When you think. Pokemon, probably Pikachu is one of the first Pokemon you think of, right? So they all have that defining, yeah. like, character. You think, like, PlayStation, you, you think Nathan, Nathan Drake. Oh, and I forgot even Kratos, right? Kratos and God of War. Yeah, you know, Kratos so yeah. all Nathan of, Drake. All and Xbox, Xbox, Xbox has two of yeah. those, So right? Xbox, Xbox, Xbox has Master Chief and Marcus Phoenix, though Marcus Phoenix was pulled from the last two, like... Yeah, he's the, essentially retired. Yeah, anyway. 
And, you know, whether you think that's... His friggin' tomatoes, yeah. Steven. So if Halo fails here, like, and again, I, I, I want to circle back to use, you know, corporate speak, Tyler. That was just for you, buddy. Um, I, I want <laughs> to touch circle base. back and touch base on, on what you guys think <laughs> Halo Infinite needs to score to be a success for Xbox. But if Halo Infinite does not do well, now, you know, you have Avowed, you have Fable, but none of those games have that, like, iconic character with them. Because Avowed, it seems like you might be able to make your own character. And then Fable mm-hmm. is kind of the same way. Or, you know, it's less customizable. There might be a main mainline character, but when I think Fable, I don't think whatever the protagonist was from the first game, because it didn't have yeah. a name, it just was Hero. So yeah. You know why, though? Because those games that you're referencing, right? Like, it's... And across consoles, for the most part, I'm sure there's the occasional exception here, but most of them are the one man or one woman against the world. Yes. And, and you know, you... And, and it's the hero journey that we all want to get lost in and live out, right? Um, whereas maybe Fable isn't that as much, may, and maybe About isn't that as much. Um... It is, but it's just, it's more putting your your person into the game, which is good, but I think there's a little more of a connection across the the brand when everyone yeah. plays as Kratos and Aloy yeah. there's no and, like, and, and, and Mason Drake. Yeah. That was actually and, that was actually one of the drawbacks of a game like Sunset Overdrive, right? Not that that game deserves to be a console seller in, in this thing, but everybody was their own person. But it was hard to brand the game. Yeah, and you, and you, again, you like know, I said, I think some of the connection with your fellow gamers is lost because you're like, you know, everyone experienced the the Ellie and Joel tale from The Last of Us, and it. You, you know what else is mostly common, Stephen? Here, like they're all basically humanoid characters outside of Pikachu, right? Um, it's very identifiable, yes. and I for think people. Mas- I don't think so, Master Chief is not that. I think uh, he's just a super Spartan, but he's you know he is a human, right? Um, no, that he abs- this, that that absolutely belongs in this so conversation. So I, I think, I think, uh, and you know, PlayStation has adapted, and you know, Nathan Drake kind of went away, but Aloy kind of replaced him, right? Um, and mm-hmm. and now they're focusing on on her story a little bit, and I mm-hmm. think Xbox is failing to do this, and. Or not fail. Well, I don't think they're failing to do it, but they're failing to adapt. Like they kind of got rid of Marcus Phoenix, but didn't replace him with anything. And three four three has so they put all their eggs in one basket. And if this doesn't succeed, I think, I think Xbox will take a little pain here because they don't have that defining character. That's just my thoughts. I could be wrong, but uh, that's my hunch. Yeah. I mean, I see what you're getting at. I I do have a scenario where I'm actually totally okay with not including these modes here, um, I'll, which we'll get to when we talk Gamescom. But I overall, I'm um, I'm just disappointed. Like it's, you know, I just feel like with three four three, we're always asked to accept less than what we used to get with Halo. If that yeah, they haven't specifically like um, said that, but they have said it. I know what you mean, and I agree with you on this. And 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 by the way, I'm the guy that thinks the Halo Five campaign was um, not as bad as oh, people say. Oh, I'm with say. you. I like. I, th- I think I think people was were pissed because it wasn't what it wasn't exactly what they wanted and tough shit. Like not everything's made just for you. Sorry. I thought it was cool so, seeing someone like kind of go after. Master Chief, but yeah. Now the problem is too, though they completely like botched the advertising of that game. That advertising was super misleading because if it was what the advertising was, which was basically like this giant manhunt for Master Chief, who was you know like um, a, a fugitive and standing up to the establishment and you know going rogue and all that stuff, and and the story didn't quite play out like that. Like they were after him for a little bit, and then they then they all became friends real quick. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, I mean, there's that too, and I can understand the disappointment there because that was a little misleading. Um, just like, uh, you know, showing it off last summer in July was misleading because they knew damn well that game wasn't coming out in November already. Like, there's no way they made that decision in the next two weeks. 
No chance. Well, yeah, and especially if co-op's not ready like? this November, you can't tell me that yeah. game was ready last year. I know. So, anyway, uh, we'll... I have a feeling I'm going to say something when we talk Xbox or when we talk Gamescom that's going to get us talking Halo again. So I, I want to move on from here um, for the purposes of time. But other news of the week before we get into Gamescom. Um, Hayden, Call of Duty Vanguard announced, announced the trailer. All of it. It's coming. <clears throat> We're going back in time to World War II. And I actually thought... The, so I'm going to turn it over to you here, but I'm going to start with this. Visually... I think it's one of the best looking things I've seen in a video game. They always um, are. It's a trailer. I know. It's every Call of Duty trailer. I'm like, oh, this looks amazing. No, 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 stop field. now. Stop because Halo showed us some yeah. stuff last like, year that was not all know, that great. I look at Call of so, Duty, I look at Battlefield, and I'm always like, God, that looks amazing. Oh my goodness. And, and then it's always just the same. Like, yeah. It doesn't. I don't, I'm not buying into it with the trailer. Um. Honestly, I, I don't think it looked that interesting. The campaigns of, like that they kind of alluded to, it doesn't interest me at all. Uh, um, the multiplayer, I'm interested in. I, I want the... They've said that it's launching with like 16 or maybe 20 maps, which is a lot. That's mm -hmm. a lot more than Cold War had. Um... And it's you know it's those details that I'm kind of looking at now, um, uh, and that are interesting me. Although a lot, it said I think it might have been like sixteen six v six maps and like four two v two maps something like that. Okay. And I don't know why you like I don't doesn't doesn't interest me. Like I, <laughs> I'm I don't think six v six when when you are showing a trailer that is you know revealing that you're gonna have like every front of the war be like playable. And, you know, all these maps range across, like, these huge battlefields, or what should be huge battlefields, and it's like, you're going to have, like, a, two buildings with a 6v6. Like, it doesn't, it's not going to feel any different. It's going to be your three lanes with your two buildings and, like, a little courtyard. Um, and it, the setting in Call of Duty just doesn't matter to me anymore. Like, I don't Which, care. Oh, all right, let's, uh, before we move into news, let's hear from our uh, friends and sponsors without whom this show would not be possible. And let's start with uh, Bet Online. Sports are in full swing. The NFL season is almost upon us, um, as we know from Madden releasing, but uh, you can get in on the action right now. You can bet on preseason games if that's your thing, or. Uh, get those future bets in for the season if you want to bet on who's going to win the Super Bowl, who's going to win each division, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, whether a team is going to make the playoffs or not, or just some over-unders on, on team wins or player milestones like yards gained, etc. Uh, you can do all that at BetOnline. Uh, and, and just for being a fan of the show, if you uh, sign up today, it's super easy to do. Use code CLNS50 at sign up. Again, CLNS50. When you make your first deposit, you get a 50% Sign up bonus when you make that first deposit just for being a fan of the show. Um, if you're not a fan of NFL, there's plenty of other stuff. The Premier League is back in full swing right now. Mm -hmm. That's going on. Baseball is going on as well. We have NBA and NHL right around the corner. And I saw that you can actually bet on, hey, and I bet you'll get on top of this, uh, pro wrestling on the site. They do not have... Uh, lines for SummerSlam tonight, but they do for the AEW All Out pay per view in on September fifth, which will feature the returning CM Punk in a match, which uh, was a very cool moment um, on Rampage last night. So if anybody, if any of you are into that, check that out. But you can bet on the stuff right on betonline.ag. Again, use code CLNS50 when you sign up. CLNS50 when you sign up today. Get that 50% sign-on bonus and play at betonline.ag, your online sportsbook experts. Steven. Yeah, so hopefully nothing's interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals. Uh, me, myself, has had a little stressful and a, a little rough week. Uh, got a little bit too far into my own head and, you know, some things outside of my control were affecting it. But luckily, um, 
Better Help was there for me, as they will be for you too. They they can assess your needs, match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can connect in a safe and private online environment. Super convenient. Uh, you can send a message to your counselor at any time. Plus, get th- timely and thoughtful responses. And you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions as well. I like the video, but some people just might want to talk on the phone. All that's cool. Um, you never have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room or traffic or anything like that. You know, you can do it from the comfort of your own home. Uh, it's more affordable than traditional offline counseling, and financial aid is available. There's licensed professional counselors specializing in depression, stress, anxiety, relationships, sleeping, trauma, anger, family conflicts, LGBTQ matters, grief, self-esteem, and many more. Everything you share is confidential. It's convenient, professional, and affordable. I want you to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash genxbox. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash genxbox. Thank you, Stephen. And finally, um, you know, there's a lot of people out there that have been working from home quite a bit in the past almost year and a half now. And for some, the that's changing. We're going back to the office at least part time. And, uh, you know, for a lot of people, that's a that's a huge, huge change. And it's it's going to take some adapting and getting back to normal. And what better way to do that than take the comfort of uh, the music you love or maybe a podcast, maybe this one with you on the go. You can pay a ton of money for um, earbuds out on the market right now, or you can get a super high quality set uh, that's comfortable and great for an affordable price um, from Raycon. So no matter how you're feeling about getting back out there, there's no denying that's a huge adjustment. Like I said, when the world gets too loud, you create your own soundtrack by popping in these Raycon wireless earbuds. You know, might, you might need some upbeat music to pump you up before you see anybody or to stay calm with some guided meditation. Maybe you need that great podcast to get you thinking, get you going for the day. So Raycons are the best way to listen, no matter what you like to listen to. They come with a bunch of different gel tips for your comfort. And unlike some other brands, they're not going to stick out of your ears. Raycons have a 32-hour battery life, too. So you can listen to whatever you want, when you want, for a really long time. They start half the price of other premium audio brands. They sound just as good, and they come with a 45-day happiness guarantee, so you really can't lose. You give them a try, you'll see what I mean. Create your own soundtrack with Raycon right now. Listeners of the show can get 15% off their Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash genxbox. Again, buyraycon.com slash Gen Xbox to save 15% on Raycon earbuds today. One more time, buy Raycon.com slash Gen Xbox. Which games, which shooters do you think have the best multiplayer map environments? Mm, that's a that's a hard that's a hard question. From um, <laughs> like just across the franchise or from one I mean, specific game? Yeah, across the franchise. So and I mean like I'm not saying like conquest scale like battlefields will take out the monstrous maps but like the deathmatch maps right that type of thing hmm i i i don't think there's been a game in my opinion recently where i've been like wow those maps are amazing i don't think i've had that you know, since I, I was a lot younger i don't think maybe so like I, I, yeah modern warfare one modern warfare two um i liked a lot of halo stuff um in that sense but the one that I keep thinking of here, because as I thought of it, I just kept thinking of this franchise. Like, I've always really actually liked a lot of Gears of War stuff, especially in, like, 2 and 3. Yeah, I'll say the Battlefront maps, um, especially Battlefront 2, they mm. were good. I enjoyed... I, I remember thinking oh, yeah, the maps, the were maps good. from Battlefront 1 and 2 were good. It was just, like... Mm-hmm. There were other elements of the game that I didn't enjoy. Like, Battlefront 1 had the stupid, like, token system going on, and, and, and the smaller maps sure i don't know it just didn't feel quite right and i think battlefront 2 kind of nailed it though and i yeah i think those were good um but yeah i don't think i've had that feeling like in a long time where like the maps are kind of iconic in my mind like i look back at modern warfare 2 and like favela and high rise and like terminal and rust they they're like icons in the genre but i sure I don't think I've had that for a long time from anything else. Steven, how about you? I I don't know what the best franchise from. It's a tough one. I gotta say Halo, but that feels homerish. Um, and you know, Halo 4's maps weren't 
Well, they might have been good. I don't know. I didn't play that much multiplayer. I just didn't like the multiplayer. Um, Destinies weren't that bad either, by the way. Destiny 1. I, I did not like Destiny 2 yeah. all that much from what I played. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Destiny um, 1. Ah, shoot. I don't know. It's probably Call of Duty, but there's so many games at this point that it's probably been, you know, brought down a few pegs because of that. Gears yeah. actually, actually, well, I'd go with Gears. Gears has had some really good, good multiplayer. That's what maps. I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Like Call of Duty Four has some fantastic yeah. Four, maps. Modern Warfare um, Two, Modern and, War- and Modern Warfare the two. first Black Ops. But I thought World at War did. Uh, too. That's the one I because I was a poor well, high school kid, so I we, I skipped that one. Okay. Yeah. I thought World of War was pretty good. Like, it had some, like, um, European theater maps that were pretty detailed and bigger. That's what got me thinking about it, Hayden, when you're saying, mm-hmm. like, two buildings. That doesn't give you a good, you know, representation of the atmosphere in the area yeah. and the time, right? So, um, but when you see, like, a huge, you know, courtyard in, like, Berlin or something, right? Yeah, it's um, a lot more interesting. That, yeah. But, like, to, uh, so th- to come back to Vanguard, like, I... J- <laughs> I look at the trailer and my initial reaction was this doesn't look entertaining. I'm not interested in a World War II shooter. Like, I'm very wanting to just kind of stick with modern now. Um, mm-hmm. Which is why I'm so excited for Battlefield this year. It's kind of like just slightly post-modern, but like it's fine. It's a modern, you know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. it's kind of what I want and I'm, I'm comfortable with that. But like, I look at Vanguard and I think the things that could be done really well for a World War II shooter, like, can't be done by the nature of Call of Duty. Like, they just, they can't do it in Vanguard. Like, because, like I say, like, my initial reaction was I'm not excited, and I started to think about it, I was like, oh, this could actually be really cool, because, like, the Modern Warfare engine is a lot more realistic, and it was a bit grittier. Um, and I'm like, you know, putting that into a World War II setting could be really entertaining. Um, but then... I think about it for a second, and I'm like, but this isn't going to be, like, just 64 versus 64, like Battlefield. It's not even going to be, like, 16 versus 16. It's, I don't think you can mm-hmm. pull off World War II shooter with a 6v6 three-lane map. It doesn't work. Well, we're, we're going to find out. Um, but, I mean, World War II was popular with the first, you know, the, the previous World War II game, but I didn't enjoy it. Um, and I, I, I did. I, I thought uh, the campaign was quite good and the multiplayer was decent. Mm. Um, well, I'm kind of... It, Call of Duty campaigns... I, I, yeah, it's, it's what it will well, be. Um, Steven, do, yeah, Steven, to use your terminology, I want to circle back to Halo mm-hmm. one more time here with a point I wanted to make <laughs> in, in the context of Call of Duty. And I think one big distinction and why the, the campaign co-op news is such a big deal here is with... Uh, Call of Duty and Battlefield probably too like most players an overwhelming majority of players buy these games and never touch campaign Yeah, that is not the case with Halo no a lot of people are very connected to the campaign and the overall story arc and all these things and like that and the memories you have playing it with your friends and campaign co-ops become a part of that experience mm. Even like oh, for, for me, who I, I'm not particularly invested in the story. I think like Halo mm-hmm. campaigns always, or the 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 idea is that they should have like um, they they should be like special. You know what I mean? Like a Halo campaign yep. should be a lot more kind of fun and a lot like well designed I suppose um, than like mm-hmm. the average FPS like Halo yeah yeah, yeah. so I, I think that's part of why that you know there's there's a lot of pushback on this and a lot of people very unhappy with this I think there's also just some people that just love being unhappy and if they have a chance to pounce on something especially on social media well they're nothing makes them happier than that um, but I do think it's a big deal uh, and I think it's a bigger deal because it's Halo than it would have been if it was Call of Duty or Battlefield or any other big multiplayer shooter. So um, there is that. Now, uh, moving on with news, guys. Um, Hayden, big deal to you. I know NHL 22 <laughs> has finally I can't wait. been confirmed. I'm so excited. <laughs> It's finally been confirmed and announced. Um, Steven, Mike Chalk, you learn Austin Matthews is on the cover for, I think, the, like, 
twenty fifth yeah, time. It's the second, and as you and Tyler, uh, what's <laughs> yes. special about it being his second time? You wanna you wanna tell everyone? So he now has two more NHL series covers than he has playoff mm, series yeah. wins. That's right. And you know, Leafs fans, you just gotta own that. Um, maybe you know you can use that extra time when the second round starts to play more of your Austin <laughs> Matthews. NHL so game. you know, it's funny. I was thinking about this the other day, and I don't mean to like go too deep in, into this, but I, I wondered if it was because of COVID yeah. and like they they went with can- like athletes in Canada because I think EA makes oh, it in Canada. Fair. But then I was thinking about this. Yeah. McDavid's only been on the cover once, and he's way better than Matthews. And so and- I. Drysaddle's never yeah, been on it. Yeah, you could have Drysaddle. And Mitch Marner's yeah, never been on it. You could put him on it. Yeah, that's true. I wouldn't, but you could. Um, mm-hmm. You know, maybe one of the the Canadians. Um, or, you know, put, mm-hmm. what's his face? David Ayers from their, uh, you know, from put him on the cover. <laughs> yeah, that would be, yeah. you know, you yeah. have options. They're saying Bunny Driver? This is boring. That's, that's the. Yeah. They should. That'd be the best tra- troll to Lee fans of all time is putting David Ayers yeah. on the cover. So, hey, very quickly to inform you and everybody else, like, who the F is David Ayers? Um, David Ayers was, uh, the, every arena has an emergency backup goaltender in the in the event that in a game, two both goaltenders on a team get injured. Mm-hmm. So, hardly ever happens. Like, Ever. So there was a game um, right, right before, before Corona, COVID. actually. It was, it was like It was like mm-hmm. late, it was February of 20. Um, the Carolina Hurricanes were visiting the Toronto Maple Leafs, and both Hurricanes goaltenders got injured. So the David Ayers guy, the emergency backup goaltender, had to come in. He is the Toronto Maple Leafs Zamboni driver. Or Zamb- like ice guy for their, like minor league team or something. I don't remember. It was something like that. But he's a Zamboni driver. Um, used to be a goalie, whatever. Comes in, not a professional at all, and he beat the Toronto Maple Leafs on their own ice. And it was the greatest thing of all time. We may have had someone on the show at that time that was a huge Maple Leafs fan that did not enjoy us talking about that story at all. So, yeah, um, he's not on the cover, though, Stephen. But uh, the the key thing about NHL before we move on here is that it does include the Frostbite engine for the first time. So they have finally moved up to that. FIFA and Madden moved to it a few years ago. And NHL's finally making the jump. And we're going to see the introduction of Superstar X-Factors, which may or may not make the game completely unbalanced. We'll find out. So... Uh, a lot of things will be different too, like lighting on the ice, which I imagine will make a decent difference in the presentation of the game. So, and the way players move and react and do things. So, hopefully, it'll be good. But it comes out October fifteenth, so look forward to that. Everybody will be like a week, a week and a half after the start of the actual NHL season. So, all right. Um, Hayden, the Wild's best player, by the way, my favorite team, might actually be playing closer to you than me by an NHL opener. Huh? Which would be very sad. What? What are you? What's happening? He's threat. He's threatening to go back and play in the KHL. What's the KHL? The the Russian hockey league. Nice. Um, no, it's not nice. Is all. that much closer but, to me, or is that like a equal? Well, it's definitely closer to you than it is to me. So, you know, saying. Hmm. Um. All I right. Suppose. And finally. Guys, um, Austin Matthews might be making the cover of NHL for like the 25th time, but have you ever, you guys ever seen those videos where like a customer gets the prize for being like the one millionth customer at a store or something? Yeah, I want to, we want, like the balloons yeah, fall. I want a free DVD player at, so at I, Bonds once for that. Yeah, did or my you really? mom did, but yeah, it went, in, yeah. So, yeah, I kind of think Bethesda's going for that. <laughs> um, with uh, they're they're aiming for one million editions of Skyrim to be released, so we're getting yet another one. And uh, Stephen, you want to tell us a little bit about it? Yeah. So they announced their anniversary edition, marking the tenth different Skyrim port. Hooray! Um. Yeah. So it's going to include like content from their community club or whatever. Uh, as well as, uh, and you know, I think it's like 500 things from that. And if you have the, mm-hmm. 
the like special edition, you get the upgrade to the anniversary edition. Like, or sorry, you get the upgrade to the next gen version. The that for free, as well as three of the community club things. One of them being fish fishing. Um, but you have to pay to upgrade the um, to the anniversary edition f- for like the other four hundred and ninety seven bits of content. So yeah, so ten. 10 ports of this game. I think that assume, or, uh, includes Skyrim Alexa Edition, but still. Like, that is ridiculous, but that's the... Uh, there is three other games that I want ported. Or, you know, remastered. In Oblivion, Fallout 3, and Fallout New Vegas. Now, I don't know who owns the rights to New Vegas, whether it be you or Obsidian. But guess what? You work for the same brand now, so you probably could figure that one out a little easier. Um, but yeah, ten, uh, 10 years of Skyrim before Elder Scrolls 6. It drops on November 11th. And you know, the clown in me will probably buy this stupid upgrade and maybe play it. It's just, I'm, I'm a fool. I think I'll buy this day one, to be honest. <laughs> I, I think this is like, unfortunately, uh, I've probably spent enough money on Skyrim already, but... I think I'm in, because it depends what the next gen upgrades are, but I generally like their Creation Club stuff. I I wish I hadn't already bought it now, because, I mean, like, I bought Survival Mode, and that's going to be part of the free upgrade um, with, like, fishing and the other thing. I think it's, like, a mini quest line or something, but um, I've bought, like, a decent amount. I reckon I've probably spent, like... 30 quid at least on Creation Club stuff over the years on PS4. So. Yeah, I'm trying to think how many places I bought this. I had, I kind of lost had it on the now. 360, on the Xbox One, on PC, and on PlayStation because I bought the VR one. I think there was, So I bought it mm. four times. Um, yeah, I have 360, PS4, Xbox One, um, and then PC, and then VR. Yeah. Probably four or five times. Yeah. They've got me, and I'll buy it again. <laughs> We're both clowns. But, uh, all yeah. Right. And you're both clowns, and you'll both buy it again. So Well, it go. depends how much uh, the upgrade costs. If it's like $10, $20, I'll think about it. If it's like $50 to get the upgraded thing, no chance. Oh, yeah, no. I, it, 30 or less. It'd be Vince McMahon's I mean, theme song, you know. Uh, just... I feel I feel like this is a twenty nine ninety nine or thirty nine ninety nine type of if thing. I think it's like fifteen to twenty. If it's mm-hmm. if it's twenty nine ninety nine, I'll do it. I'll do it. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I you're hope right. You're I do wrong. think it so, could be sixty. Though. I do think it could be like could a full on like hundred percent. See sixty dollars mm-hmm. for the upgrade, and that is just ridiculous. Yeah. But I don't think Me Microsoft too. will let them do that. To be honest with you, but I could be wrong. I, Are you sure? I am putting some trust and fill here (laughs) well we might find out during gamescom which is this week and we tease gamescom earlier now we're really going to talk about it so uh before we jump into like what we're looking forward to gamescom and gamescom predictions just run through some of the stuff we absolutely know right now so we know we're getting the destiny 2 and xbox shows on tuesday we're getting the jeff Keighley opening night live on wednesday where we're going to see Lego Star Wars for sure. We're Woo! presumably going to see Call of Duty there. Um, I'm excited to see Lego Star Wars. <laughs> it's been forever, and that's another game. It's like, will, will you just come out already? But with that one, they're gonna... okay to so just kind of watch it get. If, it, it, if it's perfect when it comes, I don't, you know, I don't care how long it takes. I just want the game. I want the game already. Uh, it's been over two years since we've seen like a demo where it looked like it was fairly far along. Um, although that could have easily just been a vertical slice that they just built up. What do you think? When for it's more and more appearing that it was release date. Do you think we get a release date? I do. I, I think they. Man, you have to. Yeah. If you show this now, like then if you've been off radar this long, the next time you show it, it's got to come attached with the release date. Yeah. That's yeah. So I I would say. Um, well, I'll make that my, my first prediction. Um, we're, we're getting a release date for Lego Star yeah, Wars, and it's going to be rough. October. Ah, uh, I think I w- uh, spring. Early I think October. spring 22. Okay. I, maybe they put an actual date on it, but like, I mean, yeah, maybe this next February the something, or, okay. or, you know, but I, I think, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I think spring. Okay. 
Uh, so yeah, guys, um, let's, so what, what show are you looking forward to most? We're also going to see some, um, Dying Light 2 there as well. Uh, they're going to be showing, they're going to be showing off things like combat, um, parkour and other things. So like you said, and basically the whole game, because <laughs> that's kind of what it is. So, uh, okay, what are, let's start this way before we jump into predictions. Like what shows are you most looking forward to? Don't be like all of them. Like, one or two that you're really keyed in on. I mean, we're going to check out everything, but what are you really keyed in on this time around? Because I feel, and then I kind of want your thoughts on this, too. Tell me if I'm a crazy person. I feel like this could be the really rare year that Gamescom is much better and bigger deal than E3. Wow, you have way more hope than I do. Yeah. Do you? Do I? I? Okay. Um, You can go first, Aiden. I think it'll be... A little, hmm. I think E3 was pretty good this year. Looking back, I think I think the best parts were were Keeley, you know, his pre E3 thing, uh, and, and Xbox. Yep. And I think they'll kind of pull it off again now. But obviously, you know, they're not going to be like, oh, but they should get Starfield. The Xbox will be a lot more contained. I think they'll kind of that you know we'll get Psychonauts two, and we'll they'll show Halo and Forza. Um, and maybe like a Redfall teaser at the end um, or something like that. But I, I don't think they'll go kind of crazy in depth with anything. Um, okay. I think a lot of it could actually end up just being like, you know, and you see a these update um, and the flight sim update that got delayed recently. Just like that, yeah, so. no, that's all true and fair. Um, um, and here's where I'm coming from, Stephen, before you kind of jump in. But the I feel like this could be better in the sense that all the like deep dives into games that are fun that we normally get at E3 that we didn't get really any of this year, we could see those here because a lot of these games are much closer to release now and, and it's time to, it's not so much the hype of like, here's when it's coming, it's more the hype of like, here's what it is and to build people up for that. So that's why I'm kind of thinking that. Think there's any chance there or you still think I'm crazy? I'm, there are five of them. I... I think we'll see a Halo like multiplayer deep dive. I think, mm-hmm. I hope. Um, we're getting close to the the end here, uh, supposedly, right? You know, with the the they said they had a release window, um, so I think we'll see some multiplayer stuff. Potentially, the Halo multiplayer like beta announcement, um, like how we yeah, can sign up I'm, for that, uh, and that could be coming very shortly. So I'm I'm excited for that. I guess the other thing I'm excited for is I could see Xbox mentioning and maybe dropping something for a game that's coming out in the next, like, in the first half of next year um, if something hasn't been announced yet. But, you know, I always hope that Microsoft's going to announce something, and they never do. So, you know, it's probably going to be Steve Thieves, ugh, um, Halo, Infinite. Have- uh, yeah, I... I have we seen the the customary managing expectations tweets? No, no. I, I do love that though. That was always my favorite thing over the last year and a half was how much they hype it, and then like the day before they'd be like, "They usually send poor." Let's Aaron uh, let's to let's tone that. those expectations that we built up down. Jeez. Yeah. Um, right. But yeah, I mean, Halo, Lego, and I assume we'll see some um, Elden Ring. Hopefully some gameplay. Uh, though honestly, I could see nothing mm. until January and be super excited by day one. Like I, I know I'm gonna have fun with that. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I guess my expectations are tempered uh, already. So okay, and that that's probably a good place. Yeah, that to usually be. leaves yeah. me in a good spot. And in these things. Yeah. Well, I think the thing with E3 so, is like it's it's the pure like adrenaline of knowing you're going to get surprises, right? Like it's going to be sure. well, you expect that, and I think they they delivered with that this year. Uh, Xbox and, and and Jeff Keighley, anyway. Xbox so, did. Yeah. Um, I I would say Gamescom is, is sitting where it always does, and it's in, it, for me in the sense of I'm going to watch the show, and it will kind of tell me what I'm buying and what I'm not buying this holiday. Um, yeah, I and I'm fine with yeah, that. Go like ahead. I, you know, they, yeah. they if they if you know if Jeff Keighley shows like a bit of, I don't I don't know what's gonna happen. I I expect just trailers for a lot of stuff that we know is coming, like Guardians maybe, and you know Far Cry and stuff like that. Um, 
just to kind of remind you it's releasing essentially uh with you know a few well, nice surprises yeah. in the mix like what we've already had teased like skywalker saga and the saints row thing and yeah i don't think it'd be much more than the, that. from xbox yeah. i'd expect a halo infinite release date and and maybe multiplayer news but outside of that i don't think it'll be anything like big surprise i just think they'll kind of go through their roadmap for the year maybe no i don't i don't things, think does it you know like um, but mostly like trailers to remind you the Psychonauts 2 is this week and stuff like that does it need to have surprises no, to be good though I, uh, no not at all and that's the thing I, like, I, I will enjoy yeah, games I'm not coming from a place of that I don't think it's ever going to be mm-hmm. for me it won't be E3 because like Gamescom is always a lot more contained like E3 is like it's pure adrenaline like <laughs> you know what I mean it's yeah I, for better well, or here's worse, the problem though is that you're right adrenaline. E3 normally is that but it wasn't that this year it well, was for Xbox, Xbox and, and it was Keely for were, Keely that, they're the only big no they were so hang on so like no one else is here Right, let me kind of get through that, though, and that's why I think this will be pretty good. Because Keely was good, Xbox was good, Ubisoft was okay, it was fine. And the rest of it, in my opinion, was mostly largely trash. Um, for, for reasons that aren't the same as, like, the Internet Pitchfork community has. Right? Let me just get that out there. But I... I, I think there's no reason that E3 needed to be four days long. No, we could year. have had one really good day. Like, fine. You could have one great day or two days, you know, with whatever, and been just fine. Um, I, I think that this time around, we're going to see not just hype trailers, but we're actually going to see a little more about some of these games. Like, we're going to see more of a dive into Forza. We did have a decent dive into Forza at E3, actually, but we'll see, I think, more of one. We're definitely going to see some Halo multiplayer focus there, which I think will be good. Um, we're probably going to get some pretty good details about COD. And we'll get some, obviously, some Destiny 2 details, which will be great. And I just think there's a lot of, a lot more of the details and in the weed stuff that we'll get into here, which I kind of enjoy. Mm-hmm. Now, I know it's not the hype train and that E3 is, but... We're close to release for all these games. It's time to close the deal and tell people why they should spend their money on it. I think the only thing um, with expectations in that sense is like I really want the deep dives for all the stuff, but I also feel like like you kind of mentioned that I feel like I've already had it for a lot of stuff anyway. I know what Psychonauts Two is. I know what Forza Horizon Five is, and I know what Halo sure. Infinite is. Like they don't need, they could not what, have though? a presence at Gamescom at all. And I still, and I would argue their entire audience will still play all of those games. Like you know what though, Hayden, you and I are not the people they're targeting with that because (laughs) we make a point to follow this stuff, right? Um, Write about it, talk about it, etc. They're going for the people that just casually kind of follow it. Yeah, because then people like us are going to put news stories out there to put it back in people's minds of like, oh yeah, this is coming, and oh, that looks really cool, you know? So, um, anyway, let's talk some Gamescom predictions. So, I want to start, guys, with Halo. Um, we we know. I, I think we're all going to predict we're going to get a Halo release date. So it's I'm not. Their last big I'm just going to. I'm I'm taking yeah I'm taking that off the table because that's going to happen. And if it doesn't, they just blew it already. But what I want from you guys is the prediction of when the date is, like an actual date. All right, I'm gonna go first here. So they should okay. release this game either October fifteenth to beat Battlefield and Call of Duty, or October 29th to beat Call of Duty. Um, That's if they do a Friday release. Obviously, they could do Tuesdays. I'm not sure what Xbox is. It seems like more and more are moving to Fridays. Um, But let's say they could do maybe the 19th or the 26th. That's what they should do. They won't do that. It will be November... um, I'm going to go 19th which is the Friday before Thanksgiving week, which I don't think is a terrible release date because you have the whole Thanksgiving break for like a lot of like younger people. Um, but you also lose behind Battlefield and Call of Duty. Um, and I, I don't know if that's a wise choice, especially when you're not having co-op campaign. So you're like the biggest, you're putting all the eggs in that multiplayer basket. So the sooner you get that out, the better, I think. But yeah, my guess is November 19th. Okay. Hayden? Um, I... 
Hmm. I, I was inclined to October 8th to give them a couple of weeks to kind of like let it breathe before um, Battlefield and then like COD two weeks later after that. But I agree. It's probably November feels right. Um, I think uh, this just seems ridiculous to me because Forza Horizon 5 is on the 5th of November, but I think November 12th. Um, because I, I can't remember the exact date of their big like Xbox 20th celebration but you need to have Halo out for that, right? Um, I'm oh, gonna for check sure. The it was in now. the 20s. It was in the 20, like 22nd, maybe? I'm going to check 24th, the date now. So you, you give your date and I'll have yeah. a look for the... Alright, so I'm going to talk through a couple scenarios here uh, while Hayden's looking that up. So first is... That they just wanted to align with the 20th anniversary of the OG launch date. And they want to go for that sentiment. Um, and in my mind, that's absolutely inexcusable. Um, and it doesn't do anything to explain why the announcements about Forge and Camping Co-op were made right now. In what is essentially still two months away. So you think it's an um, earlier release? You... So hang on, let, let me go through the other part of my little gotcha. my little tale. Remember when we were talking a few episodes ago about how the there was something out there? Like, like there was a story like Halo's waiting, Microsoft's waiting for something specific before they pull the trigger on a Halo well, release. Th- no, that's what I, I brought up earlier. And on we were, the show. Uh, they, they said they have right. like it's like a two week window in mind. Or they, they have, like, it's down to, like, a, a couple of weeks. They just don't know yet. And I think the speculation was they're waiting on something else. And it you can imagine it was yeah. Call of Duty's release date. Well, yeah, at first we were thinking um, the PlayStation oh, game. Her- 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 Horizon that? Forbidden West? Yeah, that got delayed. Yeah. So. And, then, and then we kind of came around, no, it's probably Call of Duty because they want to beat that to market, right? So Call of Duty announces their release date this week, which I'm sure Xbox already knew, right? But they had the information newly in hand. Yeah. Um, then all of a sudden we get the announcement that Forge and Campaign Co-op are not going to be there at launch right after that. Knowing full well that games comes the next week, so part of it's just getting that bad news out of the way so you can build some hype again and get people excited at the show um, and have that be the last thing they remember. But I think it's absolutely critical for this franchise to beat the competition to market and to not do it by just a week. So, I could be, and I probably am, I think it's more likely that we're going to see it hanging alongside that uh, that 20th anniversary date because they're not going to go super back-to-back with Forza. If but it they, they should. Date, don't you think they'd already have, like, why are they waiting on that? Why is there a yeah, exactly. So that that's my point. But yeah. but just knowing them, like I know there's part of them in them. But if Xbox has always tried to space their releases out, their first parties like month by month, like they don't like to pack things together. So hey, or uh, Forza is normally the September window, early October window, and this year it's November. Hey, uh, Halo is normally November. Um, I like I said, I think it's super important. Um, here's my stretch prediction. Normally we do our stretch predictions last, but mine, guys, is September 24th. I hope you're right. I, that that feels soon. really early, though. Like, mm. so early. But your first, you're the first game out. You get to build a fan base. That also, by the way, puts Camping Co-op out, like, right at or before Christmas time. Right? So that when people get it in their hands... Like, when they get it for Christmas, like, they can jump in and play. Um, it It's what they should do. It's not probably what they will do. But that's the only thing to me that makes not having these modes in this game at launch excusable is if you're trying to beat these other, the competition to the market because you know your multiplayer is really good. It looks really good. And the feedback from that that test was really solid pretty much across the board. Get it out there so that it's not competing against an already established Vanguard base and Battlefield base. Get it out first with Game Pass so everybody can play it, get hooked on it, I mean, and then you got them. Like, so, yeah. Right. So it just makes sense in so many ways that I know they won't do it, but yeah, it's so what I, they should you know, do. That's not a terrible idea because I, I just went to look up the like what games are coming. 
in because I'm I was curious what mm -hmm. they'd be competing around, and you really don't have much at the end of September that that it's competes with that. You have like That's Lost it. Judgment. You have yeah. um, I mean I guess Death Stranding director's cut would be competing with it. Maybe I don't know. The game's already out. Uh, Death Loop mm. earlier in the month, but yeah, it's a lot of like. Mm. JRPGs and and not so much shooters um, or just big releases like Hot Wheels unleashes later in the in the month right and then you know October is when you start mm -hmm. getting FIFA 22 and um, Far Cry 6 and Back for Blood and Battlefield and Guardians mm -hmm. like that's a lot of games you might not want to be competing against followed like November by Just yeah. Dance 22 or not Just Dance sorry <laughs> well that does come out but you're not competing against that but Call of Duty Vanguard and then yourself with Forza Horizon 5 plus the Pokemon games on November 19th like you may not want to compete with that um, yeah no that makes right. a ton of sense Tyler and we all know Microsoft does not yeah, they and don't that's why they won't do like it. That. So, but here's the other thing. Like, here's where it also makes a ton of sense to just own the hype train for Gamescom, which is a big deal, right? It matters because everybody gets into the who wins, right? Even though Sony's pretty much not even going to have a presence there this year. But September twenty fourth is here, a great bet as well because it's exactly a month later. So they yeah. could say like they could say. But, the, but Hayden, like Hayden, hang on. What if they say next week because they've done this before? Um, what if they say? Hey, by the way, multiplayer beta starts that's right now. That's what I was now. just about to say. The beta starts yep, now. Like that's the game the play. in a month. Go. Enjoy some Halo. Pre-order the game right now, and you get in the beta today. If not, everybody can do it this weekend. That's... Smart move. Or, or, if, you're, or if you're a Game Pass member, you get it today. One or the other, right? And then everybody else this weekend. Like It's just such a smart play. And it makes so much sense on so many it's levels a, that smart, I know they won't it's a do smart it. Play. Yeah, September twenty fourth now actually <laughs> seems like reality to me. I'm I'm still gonna hedge my bets for like early <laughs> See, October. Now I've set you up yeah, to be yeah. Yeah. Lot, massively Tyler. disappointed. <laughs> you know what? All this logic like does kind of fit the thing, but isn't there that that fallacy or or the um where you you keep like finding the logic because it fits in with what you're saying and you like you're getting rid of all the other ones? I forget the name of that one. Um. Oh, was, um, I you're not talking about, it like, might Occam's be Occam's Razor, Razor, Razor right? but like, I, I no. don't think it's that one. But, yeah, I mean, like, like you're right. Why would they announce the... But, like, yeah, it why makes would they announce sense, that so, so soon if they had two months to go, unless it's that far behind? Um, yeah, maybe, you know, the game comes out in September, and then all of a sudden co-op releases in November or December, you know? That might be a little too... It's a great... Mm -hmm. If they're going for, like, the huge, like, shock of, like, it's coming out in, like, a month, like, in September... It's a great way to kind of like let the bad news go out now and then just completely like everyone will forget it when the release date is announced on Tuesday. Yeah, everybody's going to forget it because they would say like season two rolls out in December, so we would have it for Christmas anyway. I don't, I don't right? think anyone like, will, it'll be out of the news cycle. It'll be out of the public eye. No one will be thinking yep. about it. Everyone will be thinking about the Halo release date in a month and I can play it now on my console. And that's, that's mm -hmm. a genius play. <laughs> but I don't think they'll do it. I think October eighth. <laughs> actually, what should be actually, <laughs> I, 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 think, I, I think, think even yours is November way too early. I think November fifteenth, and they'll, yeah. they'll launch it on a Monday, and it's like, oh, this is genius. November ninth, <laughs> or they don't. No. They launch games on Tuesdays or Fridays, so it's well, that's yeah, it's saying, that week, the sixteenth or the nineteenth. <laughs> like, watch that be well, the case, the, or you know, be the anniversary worse. is the fifteenth. It'll be like this. The twenty fifth is the fifteenth. I feel like they need it out for them, so maybe they just launch it on a Monday. So then November twelfth, then really bad move. They're gonna launch it on the same day as Forza Horizon Five, and they're gonna they're gonna market it as like a double pack, you know. Mm. Here, buy these together. Like when I bought Lego like Batman. It's gonna be the worst. Some quad bike game on the <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> so, uh. but no, I I think that date makes like a ton of sense. I, they should have the damn thing ready to go, don't you think? Like after taking a year over a year extra. Um, yeah. And if they're, if they're choosing to wait on these other two things, you announce it now because you are wrapping it up and you're going to, you're going to launch and then you're going to fix that stuff and get it in post launch. Right? Like that's why you announce it now and not because normally they would wait until freaking end of October to announce that for November. Yeah. You know what I mean? They'd be trying like hell to get it done. So... 
I think it just makes sense. Like I said, it makes so much sense. I know they're not going to do it, but I'm just throwing it See, out that's, there that's why I'm to get saying, everyone's like, hopes up. <laughs> that makes so much sense. That the more like what's actually going to happen is they'll just go with some stupid idea and launch on like the Monday of the 15th of November, and it'll be just like some, <laughs> and it won't go to plan at mm-hmm. all. But they'll try and time it to like go with their 20th anniversary celebration because it's the 15th. So it's like. It's but a really bad day to launch a game. You don't launch a game on a Monday, mm-hmm. but Xbox will do it. Because the, the idea you've come up with is so yeah. good, they have to do the... No, <laughs> they won't do it. They'll do... The, the, way I, the way I just said it, Xbox becomes the game of the fall. The the autumn season. Or, counterpoint, it's... They, everyone plays Halo for two weeks. Um, it isn't that good. Everyone moves on to something else. <laughs> Oh, no, you don't do this if you don't really believe that the game is great. But, like I said, all the feedback from the the tech demo, whatever it was, like, that has all been really good. Mm-hmm. And so they're probably confident. Uh, they probably feel pretty good about what they have. It just makes sense to do it. If you feel good about what you have, you get out there first. Yeah. And get people hooked on it. So that's... That's all. I mean, we can go circular about it and build up people's hopes more, but let's just let it play out so everybody can yell at me after it's November, yeah, you know, that, 32nd. Yeah, that'll just be another, like, you know, uh, <laughs> mark against. I can already hear you, like, yelling at me during Tyler, the you got my hopes up, and you like, <laughs> you know what? I've just come to expect, Tyler, every time... We, we like, kind of come to these, like, logical conclusions of what probably makes the most sense for Microsoft to do. They don't. They do the opposite. Um, and then, you know, we're pissed off because they did something stupid. And obviously they might have more information than us, but I, I, I'm with you. Like, I see the logic in it. It feels like a mistake to come out after COD and Battlefield. So... I, I think it's even a mistake to come out a week before it because by then people are like, I'll just wait yeah, for that. No, you come out September you know twenty fourth or whatever, and that gives you that's a whole month. Like mm-hmm. that's awesome. But we'll see. Mm-hmm. I guess we'll find out in like five days or four days, whatever. We will. We'll find out in a few days. So um but I'm already preparing to hear you like screaming at me. When they announce, like I said, November thirty second is the release date <laughs> and you're just mad. And November thirty. It's all my fault. And <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> so uh and then Aaron Greenberg tweets says, I told you not to get your hopes up, everyone. Just saying, right? Anyway, all right. Um, what other predictions do we have for Gamescom, guys? So we we get we dropped our Halo dates, we got all excited about the the logical way to dominate the the fall season the holiday season um what else we got like um i'll throw one other one out then i'll let you guys go i think we are going to get a a lego star wars release window like you have to why would you yeah. talk about this again well, without I a release window, a window and not, i i really feel like they're going to say spring so I'm going to say early October for this, like first two weeks of October. Stephen, what do you think? Oh, I don't know. I think we're going to get a hard release date because why even bring it back just with the window then? Um, just to maybe delay it again. No, I think we get a, a release date of next year. I could see it being like an April, May release. Mm. Okay. Okay. Mm. Could be May 4th. May 4th, 2022. Sense. Like logically... What day of the week is um, that? Let's look. And you know the thing um, is, if you're gonna if you're gonna give a window of October, like why not just wait to E3 to show it off, so you know for sure you're gonna have a hard like that it's gonna be done. Yeah. Otherwise, like it doesn't make sense. It's a Wednesday, but I can see it doing a Wednesday release. Who cares? Mm-hmm. What does it? What do games need to come out on Tuesday or Friday? Like mm-hmm. you know, it'd be fun, especially Lego Star Wars. Like yeah, in everyone, yeah, I think you're fine. Yeah. I think you're fine. I think they'd also be really smart to announce some um, add-on content, like Mandalorian themed stuff, maybe. I think I Both read somewhere this stuff. week that like they already had, and I didn't think they had. But this this game is supposedly no, no, no. This game, the base game, is the Skywalker. Yeah, saga. I know. It but is I, the I nine read films, somewhere that so, like, there'd be DLC for Mandalorian and like Rogue One. Yeah, I mean there and should Solo, be. And I was like, I don't. <laughs> that seems optimistic. <laughs> 
I'm 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 not super sold on the idea of like solo DLC. Like the movie, uh, the movie's fine. It's good. Whatever. I would, um, but like that, like you know how they're going for this whole like new model. This isn't like your past Lego game. This is like a brand new thing. Um, yep. I'm hoping they kind of break out of doing character packs and do like expansions. Like I would like levels based on Rogue mm. One to be like a DLC I can buy, and levels based like Mandalorian yes. season one and two. Uh, maybe even like yeah. the Book of Boba Fett. Like I, I will because that will already be out by mm. then. If if it is May the Fourth, like going for or even Spring 22. Like mm. I will take that, please. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm all in on that. So I, I will completely, you know, nerd out to all that if, if they do it. So no, I'm, I'm very hopeful that uh, we get a, I, I think we need a, a hard release date here. In fact, if you just give me a window, like, I'm just not even going to believe it. If you're not confident enough to lock in a date right now, I'm, I'm See, just going to I don't think it'd be out of confidence. I think they'll give us a window. Unless they do May fourth, because or it's like really soon, but like I, I have seen they'll just say like mm. spring twenty two, just purely because like internally they can't lock it yeah. down yet for in, like. In which case, I'm just going to assume it's going to be delayed. Again. <laughs> like if you can't lock it down, then I you're you're not confident enough I to do that. that. Like I can't. I, I, I highly doubt it's so. delayed again because like it mm. already had a lot of work put into it before like nineteen when it was revealed, and now it's had two extra mm. years. That's a long time. Hey, do you know that Skull and Bones once had a release <laughs> window and then had another one? Well, yeah, this is true, but <laughs> you, be, you so, be so for yeah. the curse that was, like, unbreakable for a while. Everything, everything oh, this, you so is this game, game delayed, apparently. Like, I, I, I'm trusting so, this a little yeah. bit. I'm trusting it. Okay, all right. Fair enough. So, what other predictions, guys? Um, what else do you think we might see? I'm going to turn it over to you now because right. I, I have two. I have, so it's I have two. Um, I have. We're going to see something on Hogwarts Legacy. Um, it's supposed to Ooh. come out next year. Um, I I could see something being shown here. Um, I'm I'm not feeling great about that prediction, but I can say there's fifty fifty chance. My my other thought was as I was thinking about this this show like for the show like i knew we were doing predictions and i was like racking my brain trying to think what could possibly be coming and i came to the conclusion that we're not going to see anything like major get shown here it's all going to be stuff we already saw just more in depth on it but there's not going to be just yeah building any, on it, like yep. major release from microsoft and there's not going to be any major thing from jeff Keeley. and you know when i'm wrong I'm going to be happy. And if I'm right, well, then I'm right, and I'll be happy. So, you mm. know, win-win for me. Yay, Aiden. Yeah, so, all right. Mm. I honestly, uh, I can throw out some random, you know, prediction, but I, don't, I won't buy it. I don't think, I don't think Gamescom is going to be that big. Like, I, my prediction is that it, it passes and we go, cool. <laughs> and next week, we're like, that's pretty much what we expected. I don't, I like Steven said, I don't think it's going to be that big of a surprise or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, I would like to see some Resident Evil 8 DLC. Um, oh, yeah. I think Capcom fudged E3, but Keeley could show us some Resident 8 DLC, and that would make me really happy. Because I think it's about, if they announce it for Halloween, it's a, it's a good time. They did say they were working yeah, on they said it, right? So at it. E3, so now would be yeah, a good time. Just, yeah. Like, you know, Resi 7 got a lot of DLC. I'll take something small, like just a small expansion or a small like set of, you know, areas. You know what I mean? Like, just a couple of hours. Um, but I, I think, you know, it's August now. You haven't got far to Halloween. Maybe say, like, there'll, there'll be an expansion, a little trailer, and then just say it'll be around for Halloween. And I'm happy with that. Okay. Yep. I'm good with that. Alright. Um try to think of anything else we could predict here. I you know, I think the there's obvious stuff like they're gonna show, you know, Ford's Horizon five. Of course they are. Right? Like that's easy. Um what what game do you think we have the best chance of seeing something on out of Starfield, Fable, and Avowed? None of none of the above. <laughs> <laughs> but if you had to pick one, I see. I agree with you. But if you had to pick one and say there's a chance, I guess of, I so guess about because it's chance. the closest like window we got. It's supposed to be next next fall. Okay. Um, you know, yeah, it? Was yes, that 2022. Yeah, so Starfield. Oh, did I say about? Mm. I meant Starfield. 
Yeah, you did. Yeah, I was okay. going to say, yeah. I was like, about, I swear. Sorry, 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 sorry. I don't know. I, Starfield. Later, yeah. Starfield yeah. is the thing we're most likely because Starfield is the closest, like, based off of what we know. We just got a tease on Fable and a tease on Avowed, though Avowed's was a little more of a teaser, in my opinion. Um, level of teasers is how we're, you know, judging Xbox here. Uh yeah, I just sure. I don't know. That none is my answer, but if I have to pick one, Star Starfield. Yeah, I'd probably say Starfield too, but I don't want to see it um, because I know it would just be more teasery stuff, and I'd rather just hear nothing till E three next year and then get like the full Todd Howard breakdown. Um, so, yeah, I would I would rather not. But if if any of them are going to happen, I think it's about. Uh, not about. All right, skill. Last, final question on Gamescom, guys. Scale 1 to 10 during Jeff Keighley. I doubt that because I don't think this would happen during Microsoft. Um, tenants absolutely happening in 1-0 chance. Um, GTA 6 announced and, and teased, out shown out in some way. <laughs> it's guaranteed. It's coming. It's coming. It's happening. I wonder <laughs> if we get the rumored GTA yeah, remastered. Yeah, no, that's thing. what we're getting. GTA 6, that's a zero. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. GTA 6 is not... Well, yeah. But uh, I, I wonder if... So, we so you do think we'll see the... I think yeah. we'll get the GTA collection, but I don't think we get GTA 6. Well, okay, I okay. can see a tease. I put... I'm going to say a 2. A 2. Maybe a 3, if 1 okay. is like not happening. The sarcastic Brit in okay. me says it's a, it's a 20 out of 10. It's already, you know... <laughs> it yeah. leaked yesterday and you've just not seen it yet but uh, mm -hmm. yeah I think uh, no GTA 6 no way um, not for a, a yeah no okay. I, and I think you're right I agree I, I think, just don't think like, we're going to see next, it like next November maybe we get a teaser because I think 23 is a great idea for them to launch um, but I, I think and I will I will hold that I think it's coming 23 but I think they won't do it in a I think there's won't a be an great... E3, it won't be a Gamescom, they'll just drop mm -hmm. it in like November 23 or October 20, uh, 22, sorry, and then they'll say it's coming like in 2023, and that'll, you know, GTA 6. Is I think we're getting it, I think we're going to get it at Game Awards this year. This year? Think you think we're going to get it? <laughs> no, the teaser, no, hang on, hear no. me out. Yes, no. hear me out. Because, um, so, the Game Awards is well known for inventing new awards so they can get something on stage. Yeah, this is true. Um, and I think what we'll do is have a category like the best remake of a trilogy from the PS2 era. Oh, you think that will be game? Well, I and then you meant GTA. no, 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 no. Hang oh, on. Okay, you are. Hang on. Okay. Hang on. <laughs> to get them on stage so they can say. And by the way, while we're while we're here, just want to share something we've been working on a little bit, and it'll just give you like the the over the pan over shot of the city, and then give you a title, and that'll yeah, be it. Yeah, yeah. To get people all worked up, I could absolutely see like that, something like that. I, I could see it happening, and but, and in tandem with the like GTA collection thing, because if they go back to like San Andreas, like people have been pining for, you know, mm -hmm. it's the perfect time to re-release San Andreas um, for people to like experience it, mm -hmm. and then they get to experience it again. Like I could see them doing something like that, but yeah, yeah, probably not in conjunction with an award though, because that would make it seem like hey this was totally planned out who's gonna win you know um but yeah I definitely I, think, I, I could see game awards they've they've had involvement at the game awards before i think that's oh so, i think I missed, maybe game awards but next i missed year. the part where you said the game awards sorry i thought we were still talking gamescom you threw me yeah, off no. here no 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 never mind then if no, they're not showing it here they're not showing it in tandem with that collection it's gonna be here and or not okay okay all right, that's uh, that's it for Gamescom again. Reminder, everybody: uh, Tuesday is Xbox and Destiny Two, and then Wednesday is the uh, Jeff Keighley Opening Night Live show. Um, somehow, Opening Night is the day after the Xbox and Destiny shows, but whatever, it's cool. Um, we'll we'll have all the recap for next weekend uh, on the show and on the website generationxbox.com. All right. Steven, what's the called opening night live because like E three E three is actually like the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, not the conferences before. Is that the same thing? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yep. Um, yep. you know, that was me covering while I pull pull it up. No, I'm just kidding, I had it up. So Aliens Fire Team comes out on the uh, the twenty fourth. Psychonauts two comes out on the twenty fifth. Darker Skies also on the 25th. And then you can get Hotel Life, a resort simulator on the 26th. And then the... Uh, Hell yeah. Like well, you game. know I love my sim game. Yeah. So, you know, I might, I might have I to check you. this one out. 
What, what's hilarious about all this is that you love these sim games, but you don't actually play the sims. I have. Uh, I don't like different. the sims all that much for some reason. I, I like it on PC, but mm -hmm. it's I don't like it with the controller. Um, but And then... Yeah. It has a lot yeah, of life well, to there's it, There's a though. lot of DLC. Like, um, and then finally yeah. on the 26th, you can also get Myst as the, like, the remake slash like, remaster. So that's pretty cool. And check that out. It's a very... Old, it's an old game that was, you know, one of the, the better games of, of the early parts. So, you know, that's pretty cool. So, yeah, that's your releases for next week. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, in closing, I think the lesson we have learned this week is that Hayden talks for like an hour and 20 minutes per show. <laughs> um, because last week, I think we were like 45 minutes. <laughs> Sans Hayden. And this week we're at like almost that two one hours. week I so, went on vacation and it was one hour and 59 minutes and 59 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was just rumbling. Yeah, so we I could have easily. The thing is, it's so it's funny because we could have easily gone over two hours. We probably had more to talk about, but we were just not going to give you the satisfaction, Stephen, of seeing a two. I reckon I can this out for eight minutes. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> is, this the, uh, is this the like you know it it tricks your brain when it's you know two dollars and ninety nine cents and ninety like and ninety nine tenths of a cent like at the gas station? Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, exactly, uh, and it's not even in like England, Hayden, where it's two ninety nine. It's two ninety nine. It's like, like here, you know, two ninety nine means it's really like three forty eight. But <laughs> that's get, fine. Yeah, yeah. but no, I mean it's yeah, Stephen. It is exactly that. We trick you into thinking like, oh, they weren't two hours. <laughs> so anyway, that is gonna do it. But we're not gonna let Hayden talk anymore. I can't. Gonna <laughs> <two today>. Um, <laughs> so. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, yeah, we had a lot to talk about this week. So that's good. And I'm glad I was able to build everyone's hopes and dreams about Halo Infinite just to have them crushed with like a, you know, very end of November release. So, all right. That does it, everybody, for episode number 274. We'll be back next week with 275. Until then, have a great week. Enjoy Gamescom, everybody. Uh, play and Aliens, Fire Team, and, and Hotel, hotel yep. Life. Enjoy Some those. Resort. We're going to do a Two. deep dive into that next, Thing. next week. So. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, everybody. <laughs> Have a great week. We'll be back with 275. Until then, uh, play some great games. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.